So the Cheeseburger Network, uh, you guys host insanely popular sites like I Can Has Cheeseburger, The Daily What. I didn't even realize you guys have Fail Blog. I am a big yeah. fan of Fail Blog. Awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah, that's uh, that's a daily <laughs> daily visit over here. I Can Has Cheeseburger alone. Uh, the last I read, it gets over eight and a half million page views a day, or something crazy like that. Yeah, and I, I mean your overall net worth. Status, but yeah. What? Yeah, I think the overall network. I think we do thirteen million pages a day. Thirteen million pages a day. That that's crazy. Why are so many people visiting your network of sites? You know, I think uh, people want to have that uh, daily um, mental mental uh, uh, vacation, and we we offer that uh, on our sites. Just a five minute getaway into some place that's really happy. That's a that's a really great way to put it. A five minute getaway that getaway that uh, makes you happy. Where do you, how do you find that five minute getaway that makes people happy? Like when you launch a new blog, what do you look for in the, in the idea? You know, we're, we're actually looking for a couple of things. One, is there a steady source of content that, that our users are submitting to us that we're not leveraging correctly? Uh, and then second, is there a zeitgeist? Meaning, do, can we uh, reflect something that is happening in society that would make one of people they'll make people say that's an interesting name or brand or, or concept okay so part of your job in a sense is staying on top of everything that's going on in, in popular culture yeah we, we actually don't um, like popular culture the way it stands we actually prefer uh, to stay on top of internet culture uh, there's an entirely new culture forming through the use of the internet as a, a method of expression, and that's where we really hang out. Gotcha. So your 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 sites are, I mean, you know, you look at those stats and it, it's insanely popular. And once you you visit the sites, like you know, fail blog. I mean, it, it takes one visit to understand why I would want to come back again. As a site like fail blog, you know, a site like um, LOL Cats. How many ideas do you go through um, when you're launching a new blog? How many ideas do you go through before you find one that sticks and more importantly one that's a money maker? So for us we actually have a rolling idea list that our staff compiles of roughly 200, 250 ideas and we use it as kind of a database that we can draw from and say hey what do we think about in the past? What was it like a few months ago? And you know we actually have made the process of launching a website so simple that it doesn't matter if the site succeeds or not. We can just keep trying and learn from our, our mistakes. So how many, how many would you say you launch um, for, how many failed launches are there for every successful kind of hit? So our failure rate uh, in which we actually take down a site and, and try something new or just close it down is about 20 percent. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so the, the game for us isn't about making the fewer number of sites fail. Um, it's actually about getting the most bang for the sites that we are operating. So imagine that there's only so many homes that you can, you know, uh, uh, so many slots you can actually put websites in. What we're trying to do is maximize the return on each slot. Oh, I see. So you, you don't care how, how bad some of them fail. You care how many, how well some of them succeed, really? That's correct. Yep. Okay. What... I know, going back to the idea of it's the five-minute getaway, um, to, to me, every person you know, ha might have a different idea of what a five-minute getaway is. How do you determine, for your, for your average visitor, when you're coming up with an idea for a site, how do you determine what exactly would be a five-minute getaway for them what, you know, every day? Like, how do you determine yeah. exactly? Well, we actually rely, uh, because primarily on user submissions and user votes to determine what should be featured on our home pages, they really give us an idea of what they want in advance. So really, our, our staff here are very attuned with what our users are asking for. So it's become kind of the sixth sense. If I post this, will the users like it? And I have a pretty good idea as to what's going to happen. What separates the, the blogs? So, I mean, you guys are a network of blogs. So, I mean, in, in a sense, your product is the blogs. What separates the blogs that make boatloads of money and boatloads of popularity from the ones that don't, from those 20% that are failing? What separates the two? Uh, it takes a lot of time for a brand to be established. So fail blog is now... I think, did I lose you? You there? Yeah, hello?
Oh, yep, I'm here. You know what? For some reason, it, it yeah. froze and then it sped up. Okay. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. So it takes a long time for advertisers to recognize when a website is going, going to be uh, uh, around for a long time. So, for example, Failblog is three years old. I can ask Cheeseburger is more than four years old. So it takes time to be consistently good for advertisers to say, I'm willing to put my money behind this. How, okay, so three and four years old. How long after I can has Cheeseburger launched or you know since it really started how long until it became popular well it was it was actually very popular from almost when it launched and we don't exactly know how that occurred but thanks to the uh, weirdness and wonderfulness of the internet people the word got out and it was a personal site for uh, a couple uh, two people in Hawaii and it just kind of grew from there so it was very popular uh, when I purchased it. Now, on the other hand, Failblog was a relatively small site when we bought it, and we went in and, and revamped the way Failblog ran uh, and, and how, what type of content we wanted to feature and so on. But, um, but yeah, so, so there, there are times when uh, we, we're getting better at launching websites that can grow traffic over the long term. That, that actually brings up a good point when you say you don't know necessarily sometimes what makes it so popular. Is there any science or research in your eyes behind what works and what doesn't, or is it just entirely luck and right, you know, the right timing? I think it's really about testing. Um, I think people get lucky when they get smarter about what what chances and risks they take. And for us, it's really hard to determine what the world likes. And what we try to do is figure out how do we test quickly, how do we learn from our mistakes, so that the next time we do a test, it has a higher likelihood of success. That's a great point, and I'm such a fan of that model of just test, test, test until you figure out what works. But um, when it comes to testing out new ideas for you know your new blogs, how many? Uh, I want to phrase the question right. How much testing do you need to do before you know that something is going to work or, or isn't going to work? I mean, if it fails the first three times, then all of a sudden starts working. I mean, should you wait and keep trying, or after it fails those first three times, all right, you know, put that to rest? Uh, we know after after about six months, we kind of know whether it's going to be a long-term success or not. Um, and the thing is, the thing about testing is that you never stop testing. I mean, we keep tweaking, tweaking it and tweaking it until it starts to grow and grow and grow. We keep looking for the weak points and trying to fix them. So there's no like hard and fast rule about testing. It's just we're really, really driven by the motivation to make something succeed. So we'll continue to try out new ideas. Sometimes it makes the community go a little, you know, crazy because they're like, stop doing this, stop changing stuff around. But that's kind of, that's our job. We want to bring more people into this community. You mentioned you guys have a rolling list of ideas. When, how often do you kind of visit that list and choose an idea? Is it just an ongoing thing every week you guys take a look at it or is it just kind of when you have an opening in the schedule? Um, I think it's just whenever we're trying to think of a new idea, we'll look at the list. I mean, it's very organic. There's no schedule on which we revisit the list. In fact, some things have been on there for like two years. Um, but it's it's something that if you don't write it down, you won't remember. And if you write it down, it'll give you, serve as a nice point of reference. And you know, it's just a part of a curiosity kind of curious mind that we do this. I like that part of a curious mind. I guess you have to be a very curious mind to have stuff like you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, one interesting part about your sites is, and I don't in any way mean this in a bad way, but they're not necessarily the most professionally designed sites. When you think of the internet these days, they're very organic. Like you said, they're very simple, not even simple. They're just very there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, actually, we're we're gonna address that. The site's design is about three years old, and you know we're kind of we're no longer in love with the blog format. You know, and, and to be honest, these sites run on blog software, but they're not really blogs. We don't really talk about what we had for breakfast. Um, so we really want to go in and change their user experience so that people get more out of it, and that things are easier to find, that things are easier to consume. Yeah, that was actually my question: is how does that affect kind of the the popularity of the blog itself? Is it you know, the way your blogs are now, like I said, they're, they're not necessarily the most professionally designed, but they're insanely popular. So do you think yeah. it would increase popularity if you change the design to maybe be more usable, like you said, or would it, it does it have nothing to do with the design? Um, I think poor, does not, poor design is not an impediment for success. Uh, in other words, Facebook used to look like my left foot when it first started and it was perfectly successful. Um, and we certainly don't look like anything we want it to be, but I know that the good design can aid the success of a property. 
Okay. I really like that. It can't impede it, but it, it would definitely aid it. Yeah. What, um, I, I, you guys have so many different kinds of ideas, um, from the, I always, I'm sorry, I always go back to fail blogs. This is my absolute sure. favorite, but I'm not much of a cat person. So LOL cats doesn't do it for me, <laughs> but, um, and you have the, um, that daily blog too, where, when you, when you're thinking of these ideas, how long would you say it takes to, you said it takes um, six and within six months, you know that something's going to be popular. And that's based on your, your previous experience, right? You guys have a system in place where over yeah. time you've, you've become so good at what you do that six months, make it or break it, you know. What was it like when you first started off before you, you made that system? Was it just, you know, you would wait maybe a year, you'd wait maybe two months? Or, I mean, when you, when you didn't really have that bar to measure by, how did you determine... You know, cause I'm, I'm well, thinking of someone that, yeah. that isn't as experienced as you yet, and they don't have that bar yet. How do they determine? It was basically since we're since you're since we're user content driven, where users submit their content. If the submissions were there weren't sufficient submissions to make it a quality site, that's when we stopped. But it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a combination of how passionate people are, how creative you're you're allowing them to be. And if we are not doing our job, then people stop being creative and people stop coming. So it was pretty organic. Okay, so I mean, it's just. You can base this entirely on the users at first, and then yeah. And and another thing is, uh, let's say we're the capacity to run five websites, and uh, we have the fifth one, and it's not doing so well. We want to try a new idea. We'll cut the fifth one. Okay. Okay, it makes yeah. perfect sense. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. When you um, I'm looking at your stats here. Uh, you know, billions of page views a year. What um what would you say for someone who is is obviously everyone wants their product to be popular everyone wants what they're selling to be popular but just in general working on the internet you have a product what would be your one piece of advice for some, a creative entrepreneur out there who wants their product to be popular and wants their visitors their consumers coming back on a regular basis consistency be good every single day beats the hell out of being great once in a while and being crappy most of the time. That, that right there belongs I, on a plaque. I, I don't know how else to describe it to you, but being consistently good gets people to trust you and they will come back because they know they can get good from you every single day. I like that. Have you Speaking of consistently good, um, this actually brings up a question I had in mind. Have you noticed um, through all your years of data here that you have now, when it comes to virality and, and popular internet content, have you noticed any ups and downs in terms of timeline? Like, for example, I mean, is Christmas, you guys get like 20% of the traffic you normally do, or is it just kind of... Oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely seasonality to the internet. Um, you know, spring and fall tends to be the, the, the more popular uh, seasons, I guess if you can call it that, because summers people go on vacation, uh, and during the holidays people kind of... Um, Go yeah. Also travel. So when people are traveling, it's it's bad. Uh, when people are at work, it's better. So that's probably the best way to describe it. Okay. And like you said, you you're you're um, focused on staying consistent. You know, doing really well consistently, regardless of whether the audience is low or high, because they can always expect to come back and find good quality content. That's right. And how do you guys determine good quality content? Is that just based on what I mean, what gets voted up, what gets voted down? You just one hundred percent. It's a combination of that plus our our um, content team's judgment as to what should be featured. So you know, we'll try to you know make sure that uh, anything that's related to a Monday uh, will be shown on a Monday. Anything that's related to a Friday will be shown on a Friday. A holiday related, you know, we'll we'll try to time it so that it makes more sense. It's more zeitgeisty, to be honest. Um, but really, uh, primarily, it's driven by user feedback. Okay, I like that. So it's almost. In a sense, it's a little bit of a managed content, and then it's a little bit of based on what the users like. Which correct? Yeah, to me, that seems like almost the, the the not only the safest way to go, but the I don't know the the best way to go because then you're you're going to have good content that the users like, but at the same time, you're not going to ruin your brand. Um, because I, I just feel like a lot of brands these days can can get ruined based on user generated content. So I like that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people don't quite know how to use user generated content just yet. I think they they don't devote sufficient time and resources to understand what it really means to use user generated content. 
What do you mean by that in terms of understanding what it means to use it? Well, a lot of people think it's a cheap way to create content, right? They're like, oh, they're like free workers and they'll create content and then we'll use it and then now we'll have cheap content that users produce. And I really dislike that approach. Yes, if you do it right, you know, you have lots of people creating free content for you, but you, we actually spend more money on curating user-generated content than we do on creating our own. Think about that. Right? Managing the supply of user-generated content to us is more expensive than creating a lot of our own content. That, yeah, when you put it that way, it's almost like, wait, wait a second. In, what, why is that, though? Why, I'm curious, why would user-generated content cost you more than, than internal you know, company-based content? Because we're spending a lot of energy actually working with the community, trying to build tools, trying to make things easier for them, and trying to filter and trying to leverage their opinion. It's a lot of hand-holding. It's a lot of community building. Okay, I think there's the key. It's a lot of community building. Because, I mean, right. in a, yeah, in, in a sense, if you have a, you know, a content department with 40 people developing content versus these communities of, of millions of people developing content, I, I could see where the support would have to scale out. Yeah, absolutely. And then we try to do provide you know customer service responses as if you know we were an e-commerce company, for example. What kind of customer service um, uh, responses do you do you get in terms of is it people saying the site's down or that certain links aren't working or or there'll be a bug in the builder or they'll uh, gosh I mean there, there's a million different reasons why you email us hey you know I find this offensive. Or uh, I don't get this joke. What does it mean? You know, there are some random questions that come up as well, and we try to answer them as quickly as we can. Has there ever been? You mentioned like someone might email you saying something's offensive. Have there ever been a time where something was kind of maybe a bad bad call was made, and you, you guys kind of missed the target there in terms of people reported it as being offensive, or people weren't in love with it, or is ever like kind of a, a lashback like that, or are you guys pretty? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we've gone through phases where we've made poor judgments and we've apologized for it. Or there are some cases where we've, we thought we might have not made the best judgment, but then the community stuck by us and said, you know, there are some people who find this offensive, but I disagree and I'm willing to support you guys for it. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm.